Okay, in this lesson, we are going to look at building a home value website or home value calculator that can have video, it can have free offers. I have talked about this um, home valuation tool for years and I've done previous lessons on it. But today, somebody messaged me and specifically asked um, for the inclusion of the video and for the free guide or free report. So I wanted to make sure that you were very clear on the editing elements of this tool and how you can really make it look like a standalone home value website on your own. Now, I will also let you know as I go through this, because there's going to be uh, multiple steps here that you're going to need to do to, um, if you want to make this fancy. What we're going to do is, um, I want to let you know that my brothers, Jeff and Paul, over at Ballon Brands, can build this all out for you. So if you start getting into my tutorial steps here and you say, this is just more than I want to deal with, they have home value websites. They can put this all together. Now, to start with, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get the home valuation tool. We're going to change up this landing page and how it looks and give you multiple options. Um, so hang with me there. But what I, what you're going to want to do is you're want to, you're going to want to head over to the tool that I use. And if you use my link, which we're going to type in right now together, listings to leads.com slash balance. Hold on. I got an extra A in there. Listings to leads.com slash Ballon. Link is in the description below. The reason why you want to use my link is because you're actually going to get a free 30 day trial versus the 14 days that everyone else gets. Now I have a, an affiliate relationship with listings to leads. I have been using the tool for years and I do benefit if you wind up making a purchase after your trial is over. All right. So in order to use the, this tool, you're going to want to go get that. Okay. So if you want to pause the video and go set up your tool and then come back, then you can kind of walk through this together. Okay. Now I want to show you what it looks like when somebody fills out the home valuation tool. I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes how to add a video, how to add a lead magnet. If you want to put anything additional on there, uh, how to change up your page design, but just take a look here. If somebody were to go to this website, ballongroup.com, I'm sorry, ballongroup.freehomevalues.net, ballongroup.freehomevalues.net. They're going to go to the tool. Then they're going to fill out their information. And then once they have put in their address and their phone number and their email, this is what their report looks like. I just kind of want to show you what it is that you're looking at. So in my case, I just threw in a random apartment number. So we're not getting, we're not getting amazing data because <laughs> it's not even a house. But what you would see is you would see the low estimate to the high estimate from Adam Data, which is a leading provider of property data, providing access to nationwide real estate and property data for more than 155 million U.S. properties. They're also going to see the information from Zillow, which is obviously the Zestimate. Now, what it's saying here is the value estimate of your home is pretty wide and it talks about how wide it is. And then it, is the price showing up too low? Is the price right? So if they click on, is the price too low? Then they're actually going to schedule a five minute on-site home valuation. That is going to come to you. So if they put that the price looks too low, that box is another lead magnet. It's another call to action that says, hey, we'll come out and look at your property for, you know, and, and do an estimate. If it says this price seems right and they click on it, then again, they get really the same call to action, schedule a five minute consultation. Okay. Then it's going to list homes that have recently sold in that area. And it's going to do some market value trends based on the area. And then the same call to action button to get advice is going to pop up and they can get some more info. This is what you want in an instant home value response because it's giving them the, the quick, what is it called? Quick and dirty version of what their house estimate is, but it's being very clear that it's broad 
and it's giving multiple calls to action to get more info. Okay, so I want you to see that first. This is instant. This is what the response is from this tool. All right. Now, they also get an email. So here's what the email looks like. So it's basically a the same thing as the report, but again, call to action right on top to schedule an appointment. You got your intro, you've got your data, you've got the same things that are in that report and this is emailed to them instantly. Also, depending on your settings, you get a text message alert that lets you know you have a new seller lead. In addition, you get an email that lets you know you have a new seller lead, okay? Now in my case, then I automatically put them on drip campaigns to start texting and emailing and, and work on getting the listing. Now I am going to show you, stay tuned on this video, uh, If uh, depending on what platform you're using, today I'm going to use KW Command as our platform of choice. I'm going to show you how you can integrate these leads right into your KW Command database or another database like Infusionsoft or Follow-Up Boss or whatever you're using, either through listings leads integrations or through a third-party application such as Zapier. Okay, so we'll get to that here in a little bit as well once we customize our page. All right, so now that you have an understanding of what the tool does, we're going to go over here to settings. Now, let me show you, uh, let's see, let me show you there's various landing pages. So if you've never used this before, you are going to go right up here to the option landing pages. Then we're going to, just like you would add a new landing page, you're going to go right here to add a new landing page and you're going to pick a sold or a home value offer. So if you scroll down here, property valuation two is one of your options. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'll just put Las Vegas sample property valuation two, add landing page. If you want to view what it looks like before you do any customization, click on this little eyeball and it will open in a new tab and it will allow you to view it. So this is going to be a really simple little form with this little flashing arrows. This is what most of us used in the very beginning. Okay. Now you can add images and videos and headers and designs elements as well, but I just wanted to show you what it kind of looked like as a general page. Okay. Now let's go back to landing pages and we're going to go to add a new landing page and let's go down to Pro property valuation plus Las Vegas sample add landing page. A lot of people are seeing fancy landing pages and saying, oh, I want that. And they don't realize that you can actually do all of that right here within the listing leads tool. So I want to make sure you know how to do that on your own. So this is the other one. This is the uh, valuation plus. Okay. Again, we can edit that design. And then you have, let's see, uh, we have another one. Landing page. Property valuation two we did. And prop, maybe that's it. Prop, okay. So let's just say we're doing property valuation plus. Now, so by default, it looks like this. Guys, you don't have to do anything else. You can use this page. Trust me. I can also show you how to embed this widget on your website so that your home valuation page can actually be part of your website. It doesn't have to be a separate standalone website. But if you want a separate standalone landing page with no distraction, distractions website, this is a great page to use. We can change all of this stuff around it, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. So you could go to GoDaddy and you could register Ballin Home Values or SummerlinHomeValues.com or My Desert Show. What's My Desert Shores Homeworth.com. And you can point it right here to this landing page and they're giving you the URL to forward that to. Okay, in my case right now, we're just using a sample page. So once we submit it, we'll take a look at what it looks like URL wise. Okay. All right. So let's go to the page editing. So what we would do is all you have to do to get to this page is go to your 
page that you want to work on and just click it. Let me make sure I click the right button there. Let's do it this way instead. Just go to the little pencil. There we go. And that will take you into the editing options, which in my case is already open right here. Okay. Now I want to walk you through this page a little bit because what you have here on the top is you have a desktop view. You have a tablet view of the tool and you have an iPhone, your smartphone view. Okay. So depending on how you set this up, you can take a look at it there. Now here's where you can change some of your design. So this is the standard. Now we have a page one and a, a, a one page option and a two page option. So the one page option is going to have them put in their address. Then that little map and request to enter their email is going to open. So it's two steps. They fill in their address first, then it opens this other part that looks like this, that address and that map. Okay. So it's up to you if you want this all to be on one page. The reason why we sometimes do um, a, a two page option is because we want them to just put in their address and click get value. We don't really even want them to know we're going to necessarily ask for their email and such because as soon as they put in their address, then you get a notification that says somebody has requested their address, their listings, their uh, home valuation estimate, sorry. And then what happens is you'll get more signups. But the bad thing is you're also going to be able to see all the people that put in their address, but then never proceed to step two. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. What I would do is if they just fill out the one page and they never follow through, send them a letter, send them the report to their address. Just because you don't have their email or their phone number doesn't mean you can't market to them if you've got their address. Okay. There's some other strategies around that, of course, with greeting cards and market reports and whatnot that you can mail. You can also look up in your MLS and see if it's an absentee owner and then get their proper address through the tax records. Okay. So you have that option. So you have, pay, there's your page one and there's your page two. All right, here's custom. Okay. Now take a look at custom. So in this one, you have this little guy, what is your Summerlin home worth? Enter your address pops up up here and then has their address below. Okay. So you've got the, you've got standard, which puts this long horizontal. This is more popular up top. Okay. And then here you can preview what each one looks like. Then you have your um, social media share image. Let me go back to, hold on, page one. Let me get my other edits back here. There we go. Okay. So page one, standard page one. This is the one we're going to customize. All right. Here's your background option. So you can upload a, an image or a video. Now, in this case, the image is this computer down here. Okay. So if I wanted to, I can get rid of this background image and put whatever I want there. Okay. So let's say, for example, does it tell me what size? Uh, okay. We'll have to look in a second. So let's say, for example, that we want to use a picture of a kitchen. Okay. I know a lot of, um, real estate agents like to put the pictures, pictures of a house or a big, beautiful kitchen in the background. All right. I'm going to go over to Canva and we're going to create, I have to see what size picture is best for this. So let's take a look at, let's do, let's do create a design, custom dimensions. Let's try 800 by 1200 first. Nope. Sorry about that. 1200 by 800. I reversed it. <laughs> 12 custom dimensions, 1200 by 800. Okay. So Canva is a free tool and then they have paid options. So it's freemium. We call that. Um, I'll put a link below to Canva as well. 
So I have the pro version. I couldn't even tell you what's free and what's pro at this point because I've been using the, or I don't know if it's called pro or whatever the paid version is. All right, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type in something like kitchen. Okay. And I'm going to drop in a picture of a kitchen. Then I'm going to go, oh, there's a pretty one. Okay, then I'm going to go to download. And let's just download this. We'll find out really quick if I need to put that in a different size. Uh, kitchen, let's just call it kitchen. And I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it quickly. Then we're going to go back over to listings to leads, upload image, desktop. I used to know the exact dimensions that were advised and I can't remember. So I'm using some of my standards here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to view this in another tab so we can see what it looks like. So up here you have this view, click view and we'll have it open and just make sure we did our image correctly. Oh, beautiful. That looks great. Gorgeous. I love that. Okay. So, um, I'm not sure why we're not getting the full visual on this preview, but we'll find out after the fact. But anyway, it works here, so you can just click view and preview it. So that size worked great. That was, um, what did we do? Eight, six, um, hold on. <laughs> Let me double check. 1200 by resize. 1200 by 800 is what I used. Okay. You can probably use different size images and it'll just crop differently, but this one worked out really well. Okay. So there's that. Now, next what you want to do is you can also upload a video or use a video link. So let's see how that looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to YouTube and I'm just going to grab in, grab um, some random video I've got here. Let me just grab a video from my own website. So let's just say we have created a video giving instructions on how to use the page and we want to upload it. We want to add it. So let me just click any one of these and pretend that's our walkthrough. We're going to click share and we're going to go to copy and that's going to give us that YouTube link right there. So again, all I did is I found my, so I created the video and I uploaded it to YouTube and then I click share and then copy. Next, we're going to go over here under under video and we're going to paste the third party video link there or you can upload a video that is under 50 megabytes. So let me save that and let's take a look at what this looks like on an, in another tab once that loads there. Okay, still processing. Let's just give that one second there. Okay, so check this out. This is so gorgeous. So now I have the video in the background instead of um, that image. So if you want to have a motion video when somebody lands on here, you can do this so you can create whatever it is that you want or you can use a uh, stock art stock art uh, a copyright free image file so like i've got little videos that i can use in camtasia i know that canva has some video there's another website out there called uh, what's it called palm 5 i think it is that has these let me see palm Five. It's been a while since I've used that one. Mm, can't remember. I'm going to have to look that one. Maybe it's Palm 5, the number 5. Oh, let's spell it. 5. All right, I can't remember. It's been a little while. So anyway, you would have to get have access to the uh, some footage that you would use in the background. In this case, I just grabbed one off YouTube and put it in there, and it's got somebody's little logo in the bottom right there. Okay, so... Lots of ways to get little clips of footage if you Google that. I think Shutterstock also has um, images. So that looks fantastic. Now you're going to want to check your load time whenever you're using image files to make sure that that page doesn't take too long to load. Okay. So that looks great there. I'm not crazy about the bottom of this yet, but there's the top. That looks fantastic. So that's how you do a video in the background. Now, 
Next, we have our social media share image. So what happens is if you were to share this URL once it's done, you're going to want to have a, a great image up here if they want to get the value, home value. So you could do something like this where you just grab a screenshot of the actual page itself. Okay. So on a Mac, that's command shift four, I think it is, or you could use whatever your PC does or snag it software or something like that, where you could make an image in Canva, um, lots of ways to do that. So you would customize the social share image right here, but I also like the one that they automatically give us. Okay. So here's Facebook, here's Instagram. These are fabulous little calls to action. They've done a good job with them. So you can click through and view what the changes would be there. Now you'll notice this is populating from the image that we had uploaded, right? Okay, so customize social share image, so there you go. So there's what it looks like on Instagram, and there's what it looks like on Facebook. That looks great, okay? Now you can change your background of that red box if you want that to look different. We can make that blue, green, look how beautiful that is. You can make it the same color of the kit of that kitchen, whatever it is, you can make it your market colors or your brand colors. You can also change the text color itself. You can change whether the text is one line or two lines. You can change the font. There's a few options here. Make sure you don't change that to something fancy that's not readable. And you can change this if your image is if your text is bold or medium font. Okay. You can also change the alignment of where that call to action box is by clicking on any of these three. So you have quite a bit of uh, options there. So in in my opinion is just to leave it. But if you wanted to go ahead and upload a new image as we just did with our little screenshot there, then you can do that and. Obviously now it doesn't look quite as good as it did before there. So we would have to change it there and then you can just get rid of that text altogether. If you don't want that there, um, let's see, I believe use the original only thought there was a way to remove the text completely. I'm 90% sure there is. Otherwise you can change that to just one line. Yeah. So my suggestion is just leave the image how it originally was or put something in there that doesn't have any text because that text is not going to look good against their their text overlay. There you go. So if maybe you wanted it to that to be up there and then you have your branding in the middle or something that could be fine if you move it. All right. Now there's also a Facebook um, image text check here in case you're wanting to load this onto YouTube and it's going to check for that 25% text. Obviously in our new upload um, that's going to be too much text. So again, just using that basic kitchen, uh, which was this one is a much better way to go as far as we don't want to have too much text on that page. There we go. Now we're back to where I wanted to be. Okay. So there's that. So then once you have this, how you want it, I really like that green. I don't know something about something about that green tree and that green, um, called action there was, I really liked. So then we're going to click save. And you can change this up as much as you want and you can create multiple pages. So let's say I want to create one for Summerlin and I want to create one for Desert Shores, which is a different community. And I want to create a different one for uh, a more classic community in, in Vegas. It has the older style houses and I'm going to change up the picture for each one. You can do that. There's no, I don't think there's any limit to the number of landing pages you can have inside this software. I have a bunch. So there's that. Now, once you get done with that element, then you can go down to styles and colors. So there is what we were doing below. We, th we were using that green. This one has green, but if you want to change that button and make it blue, you can play with your styles and colors here instead. So there's the background. There's your background button, white text, click save. I'm really loving that motion video in the background. I've never put a video on mine. I always just did a plain picture, but I'm, I'm pretty sure now I'm going to go in and gra I'm going to do a video because I really like this. As long as it's not too slow loading, that's my only complaint. All right. So we can do that. Uh, change the buttons here. 
Let's go to the next section. Then you have your lead form text. So what is your Las Vegas sample <laughs> home worth now? So we could put um, get your desert, get your instant home value. And then down here, if you want the Ed to put in a tagline, instant and free, then you can save that as well. It's taking a little while to process because of the video. See how now it's blue? Remember we changed that to blue? So give it a second to finish all the processing when you're doing your previews, okay? So now we changed lead form text, um, your desert shores home value, save. There it is, see that? So you can change that, and then you can change this text here on the bottom. Okay. So there's all of those elements. Now let's go to advanced options. Okay, this is where we're gonna to get to the other part. So up here there's a button that says advanced options. Go ahead and click on advanced options. All right, now here is where you can use a vanity URL. So this would be something that you want to put um, as a custom domain name. All right, I have not done a ton with this area here. So if you want to show social media options, there's a checkbox to show those. If you want to use an open format for how they type in their phone number, you can check that. Include a report how to increase your home value. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and include that. And then if you want to redirect them after they fill out their form to another page or a video or something like that, you can also redirect them right here instead of to the results page. So for example, they're going to get the home value email anyway in the report so if you didn't want to give them their instant report you could now forward them to a YouTube video that says hey I'm Lori Ballin and I specialize in Summerlin let me talk to you about the report you're about to get in your email or you could redirect them to a landing page of, of, of any sorts on your website that you have or um, or a market report or something like that okay so you can do that as well this gives you more customization and then do you want to include that Adam data or the Zillow data? You can uncheck those. If you don't like Zillow and you just don't want that on there, just deselect it. Obviously, the more details they have in the report, the more the more they're going to deem the report valuable. Um, you know, and for me, I want to deliver a, a valuable report. But I also then have an email that goes to them and says, hey, thank you for requesting a, your home estimate. I wanted to let you know about the difference between when a real estate agent gives you a home valuation and what you're getting from a Zestimate. So that goes out to them too. So now next you have your um, autoresponder and here you can actually set up if you don't have um, additional something else going to them in other formats you can use this um, autoresponder enable or disable that will then send them like that like we said we're going to include our instant home value increase report okay so if you're including a lead lead magnet let's see if it'll show me what that looks like here I don't like how long that's taking to load and I I want it I'm Oh, hold on. I'm uploading the wrong page there. All right, we'll come back to that preview in just a second. Let me close out of that page so I don't have duplicates. Okay, there we go. Now let's see. After we get out of advanced settings, we'll take a look. So if you're including a lead magnet, such as the um, market report, free, free report here, then you might want to have an auto auto email responder that then sends them that report and that's what this section is for okay you also have an auto posting tool now each one of these segments in listings to leads they, I did not create the tool they did so they give you instructions and help files on how to do the each of these things 
but you can use an autoresponder or not. You can use the auto posting tool or not. You're going to go in and look that up. You can include follow up emails or tools or not, depending on what your program does. Okay, here's how you can embed a sh embed and use a short URL. So in my other video where I show you how to embed this home valuation tool on your website so that it looks like it's part of your website, this is where I get the embed code. Okay, and so then you can actually just put this right on your website and all they would see is that top portion of the moving kitchen without all of the bottom section that has like your licensing and branding info. And then, okay, so you can save all of these changes here. These are all the advanced settings that are going to that are going to show up on um, your various landing pages. Oh, I didn't look at leads. Hold on. There's also a spot here where you can view all of your leads that are in here. Okay. So as soon as this is done processing here, we're going to close out of the advanced settings. Okay. Okay, so this here is all customizable. You don't have to have that, that logo like that. You would have your information and it looks much cleaner. I'm not crazy about those logos, so I'm going to replace that on mine. Okay, so then um, it's still processing. Okay. Now here you have also a video, video guidelines. You have some little guidelines. The little light bulb gives you more info on how this works. See that? So it opens the support center from listings to leads to help walk you through anything that is missing on this document. There are more customization abilities, I know, in um, listings to leads platform where you change your logo, where you change any of this uh, bottom is all done in the listings to leads settings itself. So as far as this page goes, you can customize all of that up here. Okay. So then what you'll find, oh, there we go. Finally, once it's processed, there's where we added our social links. Remember we had that option a little while ago and we added those social links. Okay. Now, if we go over to our landing pages here, let's get, let's close out of this. Actually, all we have to do is go back to the dashboard. Here we go. So I'm just going to refresh this so that we can see our actual page again. So I want to show you a couple more things in this setup. All right, so we're using this one, this Las Vegas sample. So this will allow you to visually view the page once you've created it. Okay. And this will allow you to edit it. And these three dots will allow you to rename it, duplicate it, or delete it. Okay, so you've got the option then from there to do any of those things. Now, my suggestion is this. You don't add anything else to this page because your whole goal is capturing, getting them to put in the home value info. So I don't want anything else additional. I just want them landing right here filling out the home valuation request and then getting their info. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a very random address and we're going to click get home value estimate. So I'm now the seller and I want to know what my home is worth. Okay, so this is what it looks like up here. This still stays the same. And then down here that map populates. And now in order to view their report, they would need to put in their email address and what they're interested in. And once they do that, then they're going to go to the actual report. Now, there are other uh, ways to build these landing pages and listings to leads. You could use a custom home seller report, and then you can just add the home value offer on top of that. And it has a video and conversations. There's lots of ways to build this out. Okay. To me, this is the simplest, prettiest, um, lead capture tool that you could use for home valuations that makes this makes it easy. Okay. Now I promised you 
to show you how to how to um, now get these leads to import into KW command or whatever portal you're using. Okay, so let's go look at this for a second. So up here um, in the listings to leads platform, you've got other options for setting things up. Okay, one of them is look at your take a look at your leads here. When you look at your leads, you're able to see all of the leads that have registered on your various landing pages. Listings to leads also has a um, open house landing page, um, empty nester landing page, tons of listing marketing tools. Sorry, this is running slow. I think I have something else running in the background right now, which I didn't catch before I started to upload. So you're able to capture leads in many ways. There's also text options and IVR options. You can add to your yard signs or add to your um, listings. There's, there's lots of things that you can do there as well. Let me just get this to open here. Okay, there we go. I had three, uh, three videos running in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, so when we go over to leads, then we're able to see leads that have funneled in from those various pages. And it'll show you the date, the name, the email, the phone number, what type of um, home valuation, what type of landing page it was that they registered on. You can look at all leads. You can look at mortgage leads only. Okay. So that you can export these and put them all into a database. Whoops. I didn't mean to click the button. So you can upload it that way. Okay. We're going to get out of there. Now, Let's look at our um, profile over here. Okay, this is where you change that bottom that I was saying was ugly, so I didn't like that logo, how it was showing up. So I'm gonna delete it and I would put in a better little sized image right there, okay? All of this info here is what's gonna show up on the footers wherever applicable. So I wanted to make sure you knew where to go in and change this. So you're going to change that within your profile. Then you also have the ability here to set up preferences, social media accounts, automation, pixels and tracking codes, your lead generation signature, the appearance, all kinds of things. But right here, there's also a CRM integration. So if your CRM is listed on the left-hand side, right now we have Boomtown, Contactually, Jarja Media, I don't know that one, Lion Desk, PySync, which works with KW Command, Real Geeks, Top Producer, Wise Agent, and Zapier. So right now, any of these options will help import whatever leads come in through your home valuation tool into your, um, into your database. So I'm going to show you how to use Zapier to get it inside KW Command in a moment. But if you're running PySync, you can also do it through there. Comment below on this video if you need to see what it looks like on another platform like um, using PySync, okay? So you can also say um, whatever this is, once you know which one it is, so let's just say you want this to go through Zapier, then it's going to give you the Zapier key, and I'm going to show you that in a couple minutes, okay? Let's just say you want it to go through PySync. It's going to open this section. It's going to show you how to start the sync there. So whatever it is, wherever it is that you want, if you just want the lead forwarded to you, then just type in where you want that lead to go. Okay, maybe I also want it to go to somebody on my team. Okay, so you've got three, uh, three options of where you can send those lead alerts to, okay? So there's that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Zapier. So you can use Zapier to create the Zap that creates this automation. If you look here and we click on Zapier, we can see here that uh, our Zapier integration helps you easily push data, um, collect your leads onto listings leads to get started, head over to Zapier and create the account here and then start using our Zap. Mine's already integrated, so I've got it set up there, but look, they've got a bunch of examples here. Use this Zap. So if listings to leads, then add to a spreadsheet. If listings to leads, then get a Slack notification. If listings to leads, then reply to new listings to leads with a Gmail. 
if listing when when I say if listings leads, I'm saying if they fill out the home valuation request or whatever it is that you're whatever landing page, then add to Zoho, then add to Salesforce, then add to HubSpot, then add to Infusionsoft, add to Lion Desk, add to you see that? Boomtown, add to okay, so if you don't see the one you need here, we're going to do it this way. So I don't see command in there yet. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go to zapier.com. All right, Zapier is another one of those free and freemium platforms where it's free and then you have to pay for when you use more than a certain number of zaps or when you use premium zap options. Okay, so keep that in mind that um, you're going to have, let me sign in here, you're going to have upgrade options as you move through this. So not everything's going to be free, but this one might. So let's take a look. I can't remember at what point you have to start using the paid versions. It has to do with the number of times the Zap is called, the API is called, and how many, what, what you're integrating. All right, so let's just go to make a Zap like you're going from scratch. When this happens, then that happens. So when this listings to leads, I'm going to do listings. There it is. Listings to leads. Choose trigger event. When we get a new lead. Now, if you click on the little arrow, you'll see more options if there are any whenever you're doing your zaps. Then click continue. Okay, now choose your Zapier account. So I'm going to choose my account. If you have never entered this before, you're going to click the button and follow the steps to integrate Zapier and listing leads. So it's going to ask you for that um, key number up here, and you're going to give it that number here to integrate the two things, okay? It's, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Then click continue, test your trigger. Click test. So now it's going out to listings leads. It's finding the most recent lead and it's pulling it in and it's showing you what fields are in that database. Okay, then click continue from the form itself. And we're going to choose the app. So in our case, we're going to use KW command and I think we have to type out the word Keller. There we go. Okay, now what do you want it to do? Do you want it to create a new lead? Click that. There's no other options right now, but there might be more options later. So what it, what we're saying is if a lead comes in from listing to leads, then import it into, create a new lead in KW command. Click continue. Now, it's going to go out there and scan for the Keller Williams command account. Okay, so find your account. If you've never activated it before, you'll have to follow the steps on the screen and go ahead and activate it. Okay, then click continue. Now I want to warn you that teams are a little bit tricky. For some reason, it tends to lose our team ID and then times out. So that is an issue with KW command, the KW command integration specifically. Wouldn't matter what, where you're setting this up. So uh, PySync may be a cleaner version. What PySync does instead is it syncs two databases together and shares the information, where Zapier is actually pulling the data from one source and dropping it into another source. We're also seeing leads that don't belong to us being imported in, and we believe it's through these Zaps. And that makes us a little concerned that it could be that some of our leads are winding up in somebody else's database. Just heads up that it's not a perfect flow just yet. So you're going to want to keep your eyes on that. Okay. Now, data source. So see, now it wants to know what the data source is. So you can look and see, is, is there a data source populating here? Okay, yes, listing leads. Let's use that data source. Now, you need to put in the merge fields that are going to match what's in the data that you're importing to what the data is that is in command or whatever database you're using and each one is going to vary. 
command right now is very basic with what it will let us put in. You'll get more integrations with the sync through PySync than you will with the import through Zapier. But let's go ahead and match these. So full name. So we're going to put first name, last name. That's going to match that full name. Email. Click there and find the email from the form. Phone number. Click here and find the phone number from the form. Now here's another issue. If there's no data in the phone, uh, phone field, it also times out. So if you're, as long as you're using a form that requires a phone number, then those match. But on a zap, that can get to be a little bit tricky with the phone number. So that's another little issue that you'll happen to see where, again, I think on PySync, that's probably going to be a, a cleaner match there. And then buyer or seller, in my case, this is a seller. Then what is their address? You're going to click show all, all options and you're going to import from their address. Okay. Then you're going to fill in whatever else in here you want. So maybe uh, that's all. If it's required, you'll see a little, I believe it's an asterisk next to each one. Then click continue. And team name. So see, I missed my team name. It's required. So anything that's required, it'll make us go back in and do. So I'm going to go back up here, choose app, create lead. Let's see where I missed. There it is. Choose team. I didn't see that before. So there it is, Lori Ballen. And then it's also telling me that the full name was incorrect. So let me see if there's another spot to get the full name. Oh, it's because I, didn't, I never filled out a name, first name or last name. So what will happen is if the user does not fill out the info, you're going to get an email that looks like an error from Zapier. And basically, it's going to say we could not imp It's not going to spell it out like you would want it. It's just going to be a weird error. But basically, what it's saying is we tried to import your lead, but it had missing data. It was missing a phone number, it was missing, so it didn't import indirectly. So then you would have to go in and enter that lead. Okay, you'll get an email from listings leads and a text message, so you'll know you have the lead. But if it's missing the data, it won't put it in correctly. That's what we have found. Again, why PySync might be a better option for you. And I'll, I'll get you another video on PySync because this one's so long now. Okay, so full name's required, so it's going to give us an error message um, to carry through with that. But once we test and review. Let me see if I can skip the test. Let's skip the test. In your case, you would go ahead if you have a valid lead in there. And then you would just click done editing and turn this on. Okay, turning on your zap. Then you go to your zap and you will see that you now have, and you can name it. I didn't name it. You name it up here. Listings to leads to KW command. And then you would turn that on. Okay. So this is one way to do it. The other way is with PySync, and I'm going to uh, make you a separate video on PySync, which is uh, probably going to be a better integration. But PySync does have a, a cost associated with it. So it looks like, this, I don't know if this, uh, if this zap was free the way I just did it, because I'm logged into a premium account, so I can't tell the difference. Um, but PySync also does have a fee. Now we're hoping at some point, at some point this is all free and part of KW Command. Um, but at this point, these are kind of all the little workarounds, but it'll allow you to build this all yourself. If you get stuck, talk to my brothers over at Ballon Brands, Jeff and Paul, and I hope you enjoyed this video today.